Big news here in New York and Philadelphia, and really what worked its way across the league, was that Saquon Barkley signed with a hated division rival, the Philadelphia Eagles, joining an already talented group of skilled position players, at least on the offensive side of the ball. But that wasn't the only move that Philly made. Now, they lost a couple guys to retirement, but free agency frenzy was kind to the Eagles. They also, signed, they also re-signed Brandon Graham. Bryce Huff came down for mm -hmm. the Jets. C.J. Gardner-Johnson returns to Philadelphia for his second stint. On paper, things are starting to look up for the Eagles, which wasn't very hard to do on paper because things were really, really bad for the Eagles at the end of the season. New additions, considering everything that happened to them at the back end, does it erase doubt in Philadelphia? Peter. Jason. A lot of fun seeing everything. I saw Jason Kelsey came out and said this was his fear, like when he announced retirement, that they were going to make moves like getting a Saquon Barkley. And he's going to say, damn, I want to be back in that locker room and play with those guys. And as exciting and fun as it is, it doesn't erase doubts for me because this is a Philly team last year that has so much talent on their roster. This team was 10-1 and one at a point before it just kind of all went downhill. So I don't think it was a lack of talent. Uh, you look at DeAndre Swift last year, he was like finished fifth in rushing yards, so they had a really good running back. I look at this Philly team, and it's just like the way they collapsed last year, you didn't know if you needed to bring in like an Olivia Pope from Scandal to say, Ooh. hey, figure out and fix this situation or go to True Detective route and have somebody come in and investigate – what the hell was going on inside the building to figure out how they just continued to lose game after game. Fans, they all kind of resulted to Big Dom isn't on the sideline, so we can't win. Well, Big Dom will be there this year. So I look at it as as much fun as it's going to be to see Saquon Barkley in an Eagles jersey, to see Bryce Huff coming off the edge. They had a ton of guys to do some of these same things last year. This was the same roster last year that took them to the Super Bowl the year before. I think there's still question marks surrounding, all right, Nick Sirianni as the leader of the organization, can he figure it back out and get the train back on the tracks? They also have a brand-new defensive coordinator in Vic Fangio and a brand-new offensive coordinator in Kellen Moore. So now you're introducing two new systems to this organization. Now how fast do the players pick it up? Do they hit the ground running? So I still think there's some doubts. I still think there's some question marks. When you have an organization, that went to a Super Bowl that has so many veteran leaders on their team and you come back that next year and you're absolutely rolling and then it just all goes downhill. It's almost like within a marriage where we seem like on the outside everything is going well but there might be some issues deep down at the core that we have to talk through and yell at each other, throw some things and duck and dodge to figure out before we get back on that winning track. So I think this time for Philly in this offseason there's going to be some healing that has to be done to figure out what went wrong in that locker room trying to think of the marriage analogy here because this one was way out in the open. This yeah. is the this, this is the father. All, the whole the, neighborhood knew what was yeah, going on within this right. marriage. It's yeah. the father yelling at the mother at the soccer game and everyone's kind of like, oh, I don't know what's going on over yeah. there because mm -hmm. as much as they didn't come apart at the seams, you saw the product on the field. That playoff game in Tampa, it was as if they didn't even get on the bus. And if that's Jason Kelsey's last game, which it sounds like it is, he's officially retired, he gave the hour-long retirement speech, what a sad ending for a guy who deserved better on the way out. Same with Fletcher Cox. These are major personalities in that, in that room. And then now you're doing this, this whole new influx of talent, and that's cool. But you went to the coaching. This is like Sirianni, like what do we, so I know that they did an offensive coordinator search in which it, they brought in the best and brightest minds, and Kellen Moore was the pick. We have to get right on offense. Whatever happened there at the end, Jalen Hurts' production fell off a cliff. The receivers, they were talking in the media, then they weren't talking in the media. Then We have to get it right, and it goes back to this guy. He chose Kellen Moore as the offensive coordinator, and this guy's going to be the CEO of this thing. We've got to get the train back on the tracks. I don't think it's ever been a talent issue. I think they have plenty of talent. And I will say this, when you lose guys like they lost, Fletcher Cox and Lane Johnson, that creates... Jason Kelsey. Sorry, mm -hmm. Jason, Lane Johnson's still there. That creates a void and a vacuum, and it gives, creates someone to step up. I think they had two really good signings in Huff and in Barkley, but I actually think guys like Nolan Smith in year two have to step mm. up in a big way. You're a first-round pick. I think Jalen Carter needs to be better for the entire season. You're a first-round pick. I think Jordan Davis needs mm -hmm. to step up. And then Landon Dickerson gets this massive contract. Mm. He's now got to be one of the leaders of the team. So to me, it's everybody needs to rise up. Does it erase doubts in Philadelphia? No, that, that thing ended really poorly. And that head coach and that quarterback are still the same guys. And the last time we saw them, that team was not ready to compete in a playoff game. Yeah, um, I agree. I, I don't think it, it erases any doubts. Um, I think it's going to come back to the to the coach because, 
like Jason and, and, and you said, the talent is not an issue there. They have talent, you know, from top to bottom. Now implementing two defensive guard, two coordinators on both sides of the ball is going to be a little challenging because, like you said, once Jalen, uh, his coordinator that went over to the Colts, um, Shane Steichen. Shane Steichen. So when he had Shane, Shane Steichen was there, very, very successful, had a very good flow in the offense, you know, uh, very good flow of play action, yep. you know, moving them outside of the pocket. And once Shane ended up leaving, you kind of saw that flow of offense kind of leave. Um, I think hiring um, Kellen. Uh, Kellen Moore can kind of bring that feel back to help Jalen um, be as successful as he was when he had Shane. Also, having a Saquon Bar Barkley in the backfield, I, I believe it's going to take a little bit of pressure off of him I think you can probably get the tush push out of the game now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> can, I, can I ask you, as a defender, is and we had in the media celebrate Saquon as one of the top players in the league. Is he such a significant upgrade from Miles Sanders or from DeAndre Swift? I believe so, and here's why: he's able to do a little bit more out of the backfield, catching the football in the screen game. Not saying that those guys wasn't able to do some of those things, but Saquon Barkley is a one hell of hell of an explosive running back that can make a jump cut from here to Egypt if he needed to. Nice. You know, so um, he has all the skills and the skill set that I believe match well with the Philadelphia offense. Pat, you've played in 201 NFL games. Wow. Um, you've Old. been on a couple teams. Old. No, it's a compliment. You've been on a lot of teams. You've been, I'm sure, a part of a lot of different types of seasons. Mm -hmm. When you're in a locker room and things are starting not to go well, um, are there just some seasons where, let's say, three quarters of the way through, guys are just like, all right, we're going to reset mm. this next year? Like, is there yeah. a. Is, does it happen where guys just give up? Like, this is as unsalvageable mm. at this point. Um, mm. I mean, I won't say you necessarily see guys <laughs> giving up. Mm -hmm. I would necessarily say you see guys losing hope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see guys losing hope, you know, a lot, especially when you get to week 13, week 12, when mm -hmm. you have no playoff implications or any playoff hope um, to making it to the uh, to postseason. So... This game is hard, and guys love the game. So I would, I've never seen a guy just outright give up. Mm -hmm. You know, so losing hope is definitely something that's possible. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, it's very unprecedented for a, for a playoff team to do that. Yeah. They were 10-0 right. last year, well, yeah. 10-1, and, and then they just they fired their defensive coordinator when they were 10-1. What would have been your reaction to that? What are we doing? You know, honestly, but I'm not, in, I'm not in that building. You know, a lot of things could have, you know, went in, into that decision, but... That's that's always anytime you're 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 getting rid of rid of a play caller in the middle of the season, you know there's always red flags that's going to be uh, raised. So, um, then uh, then who end up being the uh, defense coordinator? Matt, Matt, yeah, yeah, Pat end up being the uh, the coordinator. So now you got two different voices, maybe two different philosophies yeah. mm -hmm. that you have to end and up. And they're learning. both still in the room. Like, right. Sean mm -hmm. decided to go yeah, anywhere. Now, he's, yeah. still, he's still coaching. Now he's gone. But yeah. last year, can you imagine this one guy in standing in front? He's on the comms. He's talking to us. And now he's just standing there. And Matt Patricia's running to me. And just that awkwardness yeah. in the building. So I, I remember how awkward it was when they played uh, Seattle. Mm -hmm. I think that was Pat's uh, first game calling the game, yep. if I'm not Matt mistaken. Patricia, yeah. 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 I was 